Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming my March anti-haul video. I'm sure you guys are ready to sink your teeth into a nice juicy juicy anti-haul. So get excited for that. Really quick, I do want to mention my eye look today. It's probably not up yet, but you know, subscribe to my channel if you want to see it. It is featuring the new little avocado palette from I Heart Revolution. It's this little guy, he's so cute. And there's eight beautiful green eyeshadows in here and it is like under 10 bucks. So if you wanna see how I created this eyeshadow look, you guys definitely better stay tuned. So other than that, do I need to give any disclaimers? Um, probably not. I think you guys really like anti-hauls. So without further blabbering, let's get into it. Okay guys, I got my list. Look at me all organized with my legal papers. <laughs> my legal pad papers, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is the Benefit Hello Happy Velvet Powder Foundation in 12 shades for $32. This foundation, I feel like, doesn't even need to be in an anti-haul because I feel like so many people are roasting it and I feel sorry for the for the Benefit fans. My heart goes out to you if you like Benefit. Um, I don't know the last time they um, made a product that called my name. The funny thing is, you know, I get it. Like, I used to be just a regular person. I didn't used to have a YouTube channel and I can still remember the time when I'd go to Sephora and my only options were like Benefit, Too Faced, NARS, you know, maybe Anastasia and being attracted to Benefit. Like I bought one of those Benefit blush bronzer palettes from back in the day when it was the tin packaging. I still remember that freaking palette because I was in college, I didn't have a lot of money and those shades were like ash on me and I deeply regretted buying that palette. So, you know, there's a special place in my heart for Benefit um, and I don't think that they're gonna change. I just don't. They have found success in where they're at and they're happy and I don't know. You know, it's it is fine. It's whatever. <laughs> I'll buy from someone else. But yeah, that that uh, foundation. The only cute thing about it is the packaging. I can't imagine owning it and um, I don't know trying it on my face. It just doesn't look very good. Okay, so the next thing I want to anti haul is the Solo Look the Charmed Eyeshadow Palette for thirty nine dollars. They are starting a pre order. I think it started like this weekend. I know Solo Look because they do these like kind of vintage themed things and collabs. I think they did like a Grace palette and a few other palettes. I've heard pretty good things about their formula and stuff like that, but I don't know. This palette just doesn't tempt me. I recently talked about it in my Will I Buy it video and I thought some of the shades reminded me of the Juvia's Place Masquerade palette. And a little bit even the Nubian too because it has like that green and that blue so a lot of these shades I feel like we all have in our collections I also don't really see like the charmed theme but I also didn't really watch charm that much as a teenager so maybe if you guys know more about it than I do you can definitely let me know down in the comments so the next thing I am anti-hauling is Morphe's newest collab with the singer, I think she's an entertainer named Swa Swati. It's like Sweetie with an A, so I don't really know how to say it. But they did a lip trio, a 24 shade eyeshadow palette, a mini setting spray, and a face and eye brush set. I like the whole theme of this. I think it looks very festival. If I had to guess, it was like a Coachella festival themed collab that didn't quite go according to plan because I believe because of Voldemort they did postpone Coachella. So I think it's like a cute vibe with like the big pressed glitters that you can like decorate your face or put it in your hair if you're going to like a music festival or something like that. I feel like that's the vibe of this palette. But the rest of the shades all remind me of the Hit the Lights palette that I bought this holiday season. So I really don't feel the need to have another palette. I do like that they made it smaller, 
because it would get a little repetitive if you have the big one to have another huge palette like that. Um, so I like that they made it smaller, but other than that, nothing really attracts me to this collection. So let me know if you guys picked it up. I'd be curious to know. The next thing I'm anti hauling is the Fenty Body Lava and Diamond Balm in the shade Cognac Candy. The Body Lava is $59 and the Diamond Balm is $39. I really like Fenty as a brand, but honestly, if you're thinking of body products like that, like a body shimmer, definitely consider Soul Body from ColourPop. They have product dupes to both of these. They have a body shimmer, they have body oil, they have all kinds of shimmery things that you can pour all over yourself. And they also recently started doing body highlighters, so you can definitely buy everything for like 30 bucks instead of one product for 39 so I just want to encourage you guys to maybe try and shop something less expensive for body shimmer stuff like that even though I love Rihanna and I want her to uh, succeed obviously <laughs> so the next thing number five is the origins blooming shine lip glazes which are 20 bucks and 12 shades the main reason I'm anti-hauling this is because of the product shots that Trendmood posted. I genuinely thought I was looking at a concealer and then when I was taking notes for this video I'm like, oh, they're lip glosses. <laughs> I've never been drawn to Origins. I must say I've tried a little bit of their skincare here and there and it's just not really my favorite type of product so very easy for me to pass on all of that. The next thing I am anti-hauling is the Sephora Collection Spa Tools and Brushes. I kind of want the skincare fridge. I had mentioned that in my Will I Buy It video. It's 60 bucks, but like the body massager, the face roller, the facial cooling globes, like do people genuinely use that stuff? Because I bought like a jade roller from Herbivore just because I like saw all my influencer friends using them and I maybe used it like once or twice tops. And I never reach for it. I think it just sits here in my drawer. I don't even think I have it in my drawer anymore. I don't even know where the thing went. Um, oh, I know. It's on this side. Isn't it? Isn't it on this side? Oh, my gosh. It's, like, completely gone. I can't even find it. That's so cringe. So, yeah. That's about as much use as I get from my face um, tools. <laughs> I never use them. So, I don't think... I would put any more money into buying any more face tools. The next thing is the ColourPop Milan collection. Now, my friend Amanda here on YouTube, her channel is Makeup Just For Fun, and she actually has a Instagram account as well, and she takes a lot of ColourPop's images for social media, and so she's on the ColourPop PR list, and she always does really thorough reviews of ColourPop's newest launches, and I was like, oh my gosh, I was texting Amy and Angelica, and I was like, Amanda's almost got me sold on this Mulan collection, like, I'm about to buy this, like, palette. <laughs> And it was kind of crazy because you know the Disney collections on ColourPop sell out so quickly. But since like Voldemort happened and everyone's trying to be more careful with their money, I went into the ColourPop website quite a few minutes after the products had launched and almost everything was still available, I believe, on ColourPop's website. So it's kind of sad because I think it's really bad timing for a lot of new launches. I think a lot of people are very price sensitive right now and, you know, something that isn't a necessity, isn't really a priority for a lot of people. Um, I'm going to try and do like a very, very low buy in April because March was just bad. Like I did not stick to any of my low buy, no buy rules. I just like kind of came undone after I posted my update because some people were super support supportive of me, but then some people were like, oh, like, you should do it this way and you should do it that way. And I'm like, I don't want to make, like, a joke out of low buys and no buys, but I genuinely struggle to be on a low buy and a no buy because I really enjoy makeup. So um, I feel like, you know, Voldemort is, like, the wake-up call. I need to be more conscious again. I really enjoyed what I was doing in January and February, kind of, like, sticking to that four-ish palettes. Um, was really good for me because it made me like think things through and like in March I like completely lost that and I like bought 
bought whatever I felt like it and I'm ready to bring that discipline back to my channel. So sorry about the random tangent, but yeah, Amanda almost had me sold on the Mulan thing and I was like, Karen, you don't need this palette. Like if you want a red eyeshadow, you know the So Jaded palette has one. I'm pretty sure the So Jaded palette has a red eyeshadow and I have the Main Squeeze palette from ColourPop. So I really don't need any of these shades and I'm not even a big Disney fan. So like Mulan was never really like my favorite Disney film or anything like that. So I genuinely have no reason <laughs> to pick any of this up. So I'm gonna be passing on it, but I can understand, you know, sometimes for people nostalgia kicks in and you can't stop thinking about something, which I think that's a valid reason to buy something, okay? Sue me. So the next two things are Beauty Blender products. I know, it's kind of cringy. <laughs> I don't know, it's like Beauty Blender, I don't know, I just don't know. I have the Pow Pow sponge from Shop Missae. This is like $2, no, it's like $1.55. And it's so good and it's so soft. So I would hands down recommend it over a Beauty Blender any day, any day of the week. And so this feels even more like random, but Beauty Blender came out with two collections. They came out with a Rosy Posy Blender Essential set for $45. I think that comes with three Beauty Blenders, so it's a good deal. And then they did the Beauty Blender, the Luckiest Blender Duo for $30. So two Beauty Blenders for $30, which saves you like $10. And that was like a St. Patrick's Day themed beauty blender set so I really wasn't interested in any of that so very very easy for me to pass on all of that and then MAC did their I think this is like a yearly thing now they do a collab with influencers from around the world and they call it like their maker collab so I haven't really been into a MAC lipstick in quite a few years there was a huge phase where you know people were staying up till the wee hours of dawn waiting for MAC lipsticks to drop and like they were collectibles I swear like people wanted the cool packaging and their limited edition collections were so so hard to get and I I fell for that thing hook line and sinker I would be on like road trips with my husband on my phone trying to order like MAC lipsticks it was so ridiculous so super happy to be out of that phase and I just haven't been drawn to any bullet lipsticks. I am so happy with the lipstick collection I currently have. I don't feel like I need to add anything to it right now. So very, very happy to pass on that collection. The next thing is the Holo Taco Unicorn Skin Collection. So Holo Taco, I believe, is owned by a YouTuber that does like nail art YouTube. I'm not quite sure, but I think it's a um, YouTuber owned like nail polish brand and people go nuts for it. I mean, I thought this collection was cute, but it wasn't really like life changing for me. So nothing really appealed to me. And I mean, I've spent ridiculous amounts of money buying like Kathleen Light's nail polish. So I don't know that I can talk about it not being worth it but I just looked at it and I was like eh I'm good I don't really wear a lot of like glitter nail polishes they are such a bee to take off your nails so I'd much rather use like a cream polish and have like a fun pop of color that way so easy pass for me there and then the next thing on here is this weird Urban Decay collection it's like moon dust themed but they did like lip products and then they did like glitter highlighters like liquid highlighters um $22 for the lip products $29 for the liquid luminizers and I just don't really get it like I like the moon dust formula I like the shadows but I feel like there's so many shadows like that now that it's not really a very unique product for Urban Decay to come out with and then the price point but I guess also keeping in mind that it would have technically been festival season so I guess you know that's the type of product people come out with for festival season is glitter and sparkles because I guess that's what you wear to a festival I haven't really ever been to a music festival so and I think after seeing I, I think I've seen like people talk about like Coachella but not if you're like a artist or like a influencer and how you like basically sleep in a tent and don't shower and I'm like mm, 
no, <laughs> sweetie, no, <laughs> I can't do it. So the next thing on my list is the Sugar Pill C2 um, palette. So it's their capsule palettes. They came out with a number two. I'm excited to see what else they come out with in this series. Hopefully, you know, it's not like 10 years before the next one comes out. Because like, I swear there was a while where Sugar Pill, like we were all like, Oh, are they still alive? Like, do they still launch products? Because I don't know where they're hiding. Um, and now they've been a little bit more consistent, which is nice. And yeah, this is an Ulta exclusive, I think. So you can only buy it on Ulta's website and maybe Sugar Pill's website. So I think that's really cool. I like the packaging. I like the shades in this one a little bit better. I did swatch the original one at Ulta because it was in my little Ulta store, which I was kind of surprised about. And it was nice, but... It wasn't anything like Goo Goo Gaga for me, so I passed on it, which was great because the more I say no, the less stuff I come home with. So that's always a win in my book. And then the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the ColourPop Making Mauves collection. And this collection, they had some blushes, they had some eyeshadow, they had, I think they had some super shocks too, right? I don't even know man, I just filmed my 2019 ColourPop recap video and edited it. I think you guys would have already seen that when this video goes live. And I think from my count ColourPop had almost 65 launches in 2019 and those were just like the main ones. And I can't even imagine what the number for 2020 is going to be. I'm kind of hoping it's less than 2019 just so we can see like ColourPop making some progress to like do fewer nicer launches. Maybe like, you know, more collections or spending more time on their formulas or coming up with more diverse products and skin tones and ranges and stuff like that. But who knows, with this whole Voldemort thing, I think they're shut down now, so I don't know what kind of wrench that's going to throw into their launches and stuff like that, because you can order from them, but they don't have a guarantee of when they'll be able to ship your products. So I'm sure that was a unexpected damper. And I was definitely curious about this palette. Again, my friend Amanda always makes these collections look so so nice on her channel and she really sucks me in but it reminds me so much of their flutter by palette that i just couldn't justify buying another mauve palette so close to the flutter by palette which came out basically the end of 2019. the next palette on my anti-haul list this one I actually genuinely like really really want and it's like taking everything in me not to buy it. It's the Viseart uh, Choo Choo palette I believe. I've seen so many of my favorite YouTubers review this palette and people really seem to like it but I have to keep reminding myself that I don't like the Viseart shimmer formula and it's that pink shade and that like coral shade that's like really calling to me so I have to constantly like keep telling myself like you're gonna hate it, you're gonna hate it, you're gonna hate it. And I recently watched Paulina's Beauty do her eyeshadow palette collection video and she is such a genius. She reminded me of my Kaleidos VR Neon palette and that has a beautiful shimmer pink and a shimmer orange and then their VR Teal palette has like a beautiful orange in there as well. And I think if I use those two palettes in combination, I can achieve the look I want to achieve with the Viseart Chushu palette, so I'm going to try and do that and curb my enthusiasm for the Viseart palette because I don't need to buy a palette that I'm pretty sure I'm not going to like. Like, you know, it's just the presentation of it and like the cute pink packaging. It's like, it's like reeling me in like I'm a little sad fish, you know, in the ocean and I'm like, oh, it's a worm. Oh my god losing my mind. Anyway, I kind of want that palette, but I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to stay strong. So the next thing on my anti-haul list is the ABH Lash Brag Volumizing Mascara for $25. I cannot for the life of me imagine spending $25 on a mascara right now. Um, mascaras are on like my list of things not to buy this year because I want to make my way through my mascaras. I recently panned a Lancome Monster Big Mascara and I whipped this guy out. Let me know if you guys remember this mascara. I can't believe I still have this in my collection. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Miss Manga 
rock mascara this used to be my favorite drugstore mascara and the fuckers discontinued it like i'm so salty about that l'oreal like you have no idea this was a gem of a mascara i love how it like goops up my lashes and makes them look very like thick and juicy and i wish they would have kept this one and gotten rid of the pink tube did not like the pink tube but i love this yellow tube this one's definitely showing its age it has not aged well in my storage so i'm happy that i'm going through some of these older products and trying them out and moving them out of my collection once i've used them up so anyway back to the abh i think i recently saw mel thompson feature that in her march favorites video she really likes the abh mascara and i'm sure if i had a spare 25 dollars to spend on a mascara i would probably like it too but I'm okay with letting other people spend their money and me just taking it all in in the sidelines. That's okay. So let me know if you guys have tried it. Maybe you had a sample. Let me know if you enjoyed it. The next thing I'm anti-hauling, another thing I really kind of contemplated, like I put it in my basket, I took it out of my basket, put it in my basket, took it out of my basket, are the new Charlotte Tilbury quads. So she came out with four of them. Um, they're $53. She has super blue green lights, which is an existing one that she relaunched under a different name, which doesn't really make sense to me. Then she did copper, orange, and mesmerizing maroon. So the thing that really gets me is that one picture, the one that was like a PR picture where all the four quads are on like different squares and then the pencils are like surrounding them. It's so eye-catching. The pencils, by the way, are 30 bucks a pop. So that's insane as well like holy moly um but yeah I was just like okay really cute really want it but I'm not gonna buy it so I passed on it I think you guys had commented too on my channel that Michelle Wong had um reviewed them and she didn't really love the blue quad which I think was the one a lot of you were eyeing so all of that was an easy pass for me after I really gave it some thought. The next thing I'm anti-hauling is the KKW Classic Collection number two. This one recently launched on KKW Beauty. I honestly had to be like, is this one different from the original? <laughs> um, so that was an easy pass for me as well. Very easy for me to anti-haul. I used to collect her 10 pan eyeshadow palettes, but after the Artist and Muse palette, I really kind of re- thought my life choices of collecting her stuff because it wasn't very good and I mean I do know for a fact that KKW is produced in the same factory as Colourpop and it might not be the same formula but I genuinely see like so many similarities in the KKW formula to the Colourpop formula that I don't feel the need to pay the KKW prices for her products anymore so even though I was very drawn to the aesthetic of her brand I don't plan on buying anything from her in 2020 so that is my spiel sticking to it next thing I'm anti-hauling is the Dyson Coral hair straightener for $500 it actually retails for $499 but I decided I should just round up so I can just say $500 <laughs> but what do you guys think of this this one I kind of want if I had a spare $500 I think I would totally pick it up but I don't have a spare $500 and with things the way they are right now it seems like a really bad thing to put like $500 towards so I could see myself potentially getting this in the future but at this time it's like mm, anti-haul anti-haul no chance that that's coming home with me so the next thing I'm anti-hauling are the Stila Double Dip Suede Shade and Glitter Glow Liquid Eyeshadows. They came out with 12 shades for $24 each. So I still remember the time where the Glitter and Glows were like the coolest thing ever. Um, they were like one of the first like liquid eyeshadows from like a Sephora Ulta type brand and people were buying them by the boatloads. I have a few shades still from when they were really hyped on YouTube. I never used them. I should probably declutter them. Um, we'll get around to that. But but they came out with these new shades and they're like double-sided or something. I don't know. They look very strange. And personally, don't get me wrong, I love a good liquid eyeshadow. But that like phase in my life, I've kind of passed on from so I'm not really attracted to that type of product anymore 
and I never use them so I definitely don't need to pick up any more so yeah that's my story sticking to it and then I thought this was really random I don't know if Mac did anything else other than come out with a pink Barbie lipstick and it was a collab with Barbie and like why <laughs> who asked for this who asked for a pink lipstick with a Barbie collab? I don't know. Maybe if you guys like limited edition packaging, you're like freaking out about this. But personally, I feel like it's a waste of space. Um, sorry, Barbie. You know I love you, girl. Okay, next thing I'm anti-hauling is the ABH X Nicole Barrero Highlighter Palette for $40. So many people have actually purchased this palette on the relaunch. I'm actually surprised how many YouTubers I saw reviewing it and I'm like girl that palette is not that great it's so glittery the one I have is so glittery I was just like that's kind of side-eyeing I was like I was kind of judging people that were picking up that palette because I honestly didn't think it was that great mine recently sold on Poshmark so it is gone from my collection <clears throat> it is gone from my collection and I am so happy um somebody bought like I had a set with two glow kits and then the ABH glow kit, the ColourPop highlighter, like that was a good amount of highlighters. So whoever picked that up is gonna be rolling in highlighter until they die because <laughs> there's a lot of highlighter in that, in that collection of products. So yeah, I hope they enjoy it, but I was not a fan of the Nicole Guerrero highlighting palette to be very honest. The next thing I'm anti-hauling, it's actually two collections from Tarte. There's the Powered by Maracuja collection that had like a weird like Maracuja foundation and like a face spray and then they had like a Tarte like bronzer collection that they came out with like cream bronzers and some li lippies and some like a brush to apply it with that all kind of just looked very meh, you know? so easy pass on all of that and then I'm anti-hauling the ColourPop sponges they're seven dollars a pop and then they have this little set which was such great marketing let's be real like they kind of look like little easter eggs and little like pastel shades and like suck you in and I I was just able to like socially distance myself from the draw of those sponges and I was it was easy for me to say no to those. I really, really like my Shop Masse sponge. So anything that comes out that's a sponge, I always compare to my Shop Masse sponge and I'm like, it can't be as good as a, like a $1.55 Shop Masse sponge. So no. <laughs> okay, the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the BH Cosmetics Romantic Nomad and Color Vivace palettes these are like 16 shades for $12 so they're little tiny guys from BH Cosmetics and I think they're really nice I just am on a little bit of a break from BH Cosmetics this year as well you guys know and nothing else to say other than I mean it's like a good brand it's just that I definitely got sucked in to buying from BH last year a lot and so I'm trying to scale it back this year so we'll see how that goes and next, I want to anti-haul the Kylie Single Shadows. So she launched singles of some of her favorite already existing shadows from some of her eyeshadow palettes. So I saw a lot of people were really excited to pick up the singles. But again, Kylie Cosmetics is also made in the same facility that ColourPop is. And I feel like the formulas are very similar. I don't know that they are the same, but I feel like they're similar. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it and so it's like mm, I don't really need to make purchases like that if I like the ColourPop formula and the ColourPop formula is typically cheaper so I'm happy to support ColourPop don't need to keep buying from Miss Kylie so the next things I'm anti-hauling are some new palettes from Sugar Rush which is like Tarte's sister brand and they came out with three new palettes I feel like these ones also have like that festival vibe there's the Surf Babe, Sunbeam, Summer Playlist palettes and I think of like the type of girl that these palettes kind of embody and I feel like nobody that's hanging out at the beach during the summertime listening to music and surfing is gonna want anything to do with these palettes I mean you guys can correct me if I'm wrong but I don't know they just look 
so mildly pigmented and like very pastel-y and chalky and I'm not a surfer girl but I did grow up on an island and I can tell you at like 15, 16, I was not thinking about eyeshadow palettes that look like this. Okay, the next one is the Lunatic Cosmetics Descendants Palette for $42. This is a very unique palette. I know there's so many people that are huge fans of Lunatic Labs and I think if you like cool tones, this could be the perfect palette for you. I personally don't like the aesthetic of the palette like it's so big and there's so much like unused space in the palette it seems like it could have been such a simple palette but then again I understand that's the vibe of the the brand and if you're into that that's totally cool I'm not really into it so it's an easy skip for me the next thing I am anti-hauling is the MAC Dazzle shadows for $20. So these are some new singles that they came out with. They look very beautiful and very, very sparkly. But honestly, like there's so many brands that make eyeshadows like this. You do not need to spend 20 bucks on eyeshadow from MAC to achieve this kind of like glitter shimmer eye look. I would say look into JD Glow. That's going to be your best bet for very, very pigmented shimmery shadows and you'd be supporting an indie brand which is 100% awesome in my book. And the last thing I'm anti-hauling is the Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks. They came out with 12 new shades. I've just never been a stick product person, especially the eyeshadows. I tried some of the Laura Mercier stick shadows because around the holidays they always do a little set and it's usually a little bit more discounted and it gives you like a variety of shades to try. And I know the YouTubers that love the Laura Mercier formula and the sticks, I get it. Like Alana Davidson sings the Caviar Sticks praises and I get it. That's like her aesthetic, that's her makeup vibe. And I'm sure if I, you know, sat there and I was into it, I would really enjoy it. But it's just not pigmented enough for me. I like my eyeshadows to be like, bam, in your face, you know. And they did try to do some poppy shades, but eh. It's like really, I don't know how much the sticks are, but I know they're not very affordable. Obviously, Laura Mercier is a bit more of a pricey brand and so easy for me to pass on all of this. So yeah, that is it for my March anti-haul. Let me know what products you are anti-hauling this month. I love talking to you guys down in the comment section and I will definitely be doing an April anti-haul. So tag me in those products on Instagram if you see anything you would like me to include in an anti-haul or you can always DM me as well because um, I love talking to you guys of course and thank you guys for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you in my next one soon bye guys